You'll have noticed the eagle-eyed among you. We haven't had a reading. Nobody's popped up and brought a verse of scripture this morning. And that's intentional. Because the challenges I believe that God has asked you to, to do has been set. Will you read the Acts of the Apostles intentionally as we go forward? Would you keep going back to this book of scripture that is the red source that gives us so much we can learn? Are you going to do that not just when we've been thinking about the Acts of the Apostles and what it means to be God's people as a one-off, but are we going to keep going back to it? That's the challenge that's set before us this morning. So, there is some scripture to come towards the end of my message this morning, I think. But God said, as you draw this sermon series to a close at Cotton End, just speak apostolically to them. And you might be saying, what does that mean? What is Adam going to do this morning? What does speaking apostolically means? Speaking apostolically means saying it as it is. When we have thought about a lot of things through a sermon series, sometimes we can lose what God is wanting to say. So this morning I want to speak apostolically to you. It's something that's a gift that God has given me. People say, when you speak, Adam, sometimes God speaks through you. That apostolic gift is something that I've neither asked for, God has just given me. I just sometimes say things as it is. A church I was in just before Christmas said, ooh, at the end of one of my messages, you didn't hold back, did you? I said, there's no, we haven't got time to hold back. The body of Christ does not have time to hold back as we go forward. So if I say anything this morning, ask whether this is God speaking into your heart. I'm not here to offend. I just want us to simply be real as we pull together this series on the Acts of the Apostles. I think there are six things that God's been saying to me again and again and again as we emerge out of the pandemic. And I think these six things are, and I've put it in bold type in my text, for Cotton End. These are six things I believe God has said directly are for you at Cotton End. So this is not a generic sermon that I'm going to go and preach somewhere else. This is for you. God has given you at Cotton End a window of opportunity. I've said many times, and I've said it during the last sermon series, the best days for Cotton End Baptist Church and what God wants to do are still ahead of you. You can look at the history of those men and women who've been part of the ministry here and gone, they were good guys. I believe that God has better things for Cotton End. We have to believe that. That's not mere sounding words. God has given us a window of opportunity. We are the only Christian fellowship in this community of Cotton End. What are we? That's we, me, Becky. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? If you put on Premier Christian Radio, UCB, or any other Christian media outlet... You will hear story after story after story of people saying that because of the pandemic, there is a greater sense of people asking questions of faith. The number of people who are going on online alpha courses has gone through the roof. But we, here in Cotton End, are called to be the local church for this community. Isaiah 62 verse 10 talks about God making a highway 
for believers. If God has given us a window of opportunity for us to regroup and to regather as his people here in Cotton End, are we going to make a highway that invites people to come in and be part of what God is doing here? I don't mean just the, of course, Adam, don't be so stupid. I mean, really. Are we going to have a John the Baptist spirit? If we look at the life of John the Baptist, and it's evident through all of the encounters in the Acts of the Apostles, many, many, not some, but many, had a spirit where they didn't forget the red source. They spoke and they told it as it is. Have we, I'm going to pose it as a question, I've written it down not as a question on my script in front of me, but had we, have you, cowered to political correctness and cultural tolerance that hinders you from being the people that God has called you, we, to be. I think if we're on honest, maybe we have. And so I've got six things, as I say, that I think God is wanting to say to us as we enter a new year, but as we come to the end of this sermon series on the Acts of the Apostles. The first thing I think God is wanting us to say, wanting to say to us is this. All of us, all of us here sitting in this building, all of us who consider ourselves to be part of the fellowship here at Cotton End Baptist Church need to receive the Holy Spirit afresh. We need to be consumed by a holy fire afresh. Not so that we become spiritually better than anybody else, but actually because we want to receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit so that we can be led and guided to do what he asks of us. Another question. When was the last time Time, you came and asked God about being filled afresh. Can you remember it? Can you remember the last time you seriously said to God, I want to be filled afresh with your Holy Spirit? I was privileged to be in Wales just before Christmas at the Bible College of Wales, the place where Rhys Howells had uh, many of the revival meetings for the Welsh revival. It was just amazing to be there. I was there because Neighbourhood Prayer Network and the National Day of Prayer and Worship are partnering together. We're doing something quite radical, it would seem by many. We're bring, coming together to say that God wants to see the temperature of prayer across this family of nations change. That's what we're doing. And it's taken denominational leaders by surprise. It's taken uh, parachurch leaders by surprise. But we've come, myself, Carl Brettel, Dr. Jonathan Oliady, we've come to the recognition that what God is asking of us is that we have to just say it as it is. Jonathan, I shared this with you before, but I share it again. If you haven't got a copy of this book, please let me encourage you to get a copy. Not because it's another book, but because it's a book that talks about again and again and again, that God seems to be saying the same thing. He wants to create a canopy of lights across this nation. 
when we were in Wales, one of the leaders of one of the big streams in Wales said, can I take the mic from Pastor Jonathan while he was speaking? And Pastor Jonathan invited him to come up. And he said this, the floor is the door. The floor is the door. Church, we need to be reminded, we need to, some of us, be convicted that we are not bigger in our Christian walk than our prayer life. Do some of us, as we think about the Acts of the Apostles, need to come and hit the floor? Do we need to come and have a fresh encounter with Jesus? My second thing that I wanted to say. Christians, believers, you and I sitting here in church this morning, need as we move forward to not allow the fear of man or political correctness to intimidate, intimidate what God is saying to the church that he wants to say to the world. I was at a meeting on Tuesday. It's the first meeting between denominational leaders, leaders of church organisations, with the government. The faiths minister, Kemi Badenlock, said, I think the church has lost its prophetic edge. Have we here at Cotton End lost our prophetic edge to be unashamedly proclaiming the gospel. I think we may have lost our prophetic edge. God says, I want to give you back your prophetic edge, but you need to ask. The third point. Believers are called to teach and preach the word of God boldly. They're to preach and teach the word of God boldly so that the Holy Spirit can work in people's lives. Becky this morning spoke about what is it we want to be when we're older? Maybe some of us, God is saying to you, what is it that I, what is it that I want you to do next? It's not about being old. It's about what does he want to do next? As I read the Acts of the Apostles, as I've been studying it hard for this sermon series, God has reminded me again and again and again. Acts chapter 16 is an example of this. It talks about how the gospel spread. And it spread because there were witnesses. If we'd have had that sermon that I was going to preach, in the tidy, neat sermon series, I was going to talk to you about the importance of not just saying that the growth and the power of the move of the Spirit comes from evangelists. It comes from all of us being witnesses. Do we this morning need to be better witnesses? Do we need to ask God to help us? My fourth point. Do we need to be those that allow the Spirit of God to set people free? I believe that as we go forward, God wants to set people free. Free from things that have left them in bondage for many years. And he wants to use you and I to do that. Are we going to be bold enough to take that step? Are we going to be bold enough to take that step so that we can let other people know of the power that God wants to give so that people can be set free? What would Cotton End look like? if people were set free. 
I've been talking to the leadership team of MPN as I've taken over about the, fact, the sense that I get that many people have walked away from the church, not from God, but walked away from the church. People need to know that they can be set free. And actually, those of us gathered here in church this morning can be part of it. My fifth point. We are, as we look at the book of Acts, to rejoice when persecution comes. The last message I would have brought on this sermon series was called Being a Community That Suffer. We are to rejoice when persecution comes. We're not to grumble or complain, but to know that when persecution comes, we see the reminder that we are being faithful to the things that God has given us. And so for us, that woe is me attitude that we have, that woe is me that Christians are persecuted needs to go. We need to step forward. It's simplistic, but it's something I believe to be true. My sixth point draws all of this together. We need to make our churches, our houses, our schools, places where prayer happens. I said yesterday at the Stronger Conference that if you were to cut me in half like a stick of rock, and I've said this before in this place many times, if you were to cut me in half like a stick of rock, that word prayer would be there. God is asking me to challenge you this morning to say, what's your desire for prayer? What do we need to do to increase prayer? UCB, some years ago, did a piece of research that said 80% of churches in this country have no midweek prayer meeting. Where are the mechanisms in this church for the mobilisation of prayer? Is God saying something to us? I want to go back and just, and this is where we're going to go to the scripture from Acts chapter 4. When I look at the early believers and I think about wanting to summarise everything in the book of Acts, this is the passage that jumps out at me. Acts chapter 4, 31, 32 and 33 say this. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Next, next verse. Feels like a cliffhanger. Verse 432. Here we go. Verse 32. We will get there just. Right. Are we got... oh. Verse 32 says, I'll pick it up. All the believers were one in heart and mind with their own. When one and, were one in heart and mind, no one claimed that any of his possessions were his own, but they shared everything they had. And verse 33, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. If you remember nothing, of what I've set, said over five Sundays. Remember those three verses, because that's what I believe God is saying to us at Cotton End. As we pray here in Cotton End, God wants this place to shake. He wants this place to shake, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. That this is an engine room of the Holy Spirit. And that as we go out into Cotton End, 
into the places where he puts us, we would go and speak the word of the Lord boldly. That we would be of one heart and one mind. That we wouldn't hold our physical possessions, those things that God has given us, that we wouldn't keep them to ourselves, but actually we would share them equally. That we would go knowing that we are part of the body of Christ, testifying to the resurrection of Jesus. And we would do all of that because we know that God's grace was with us all. I said a little while ago, that is the message that I believe that God has for us here at Cotton End. This is not a generic message. We are called to be unleashed. God wants to unleash the gift of God that is in each and every one of us so that we can go out and change the world. I believe that in the years to come, we will not see empty seats in this building. Not because we've had a great marketing campaign or we've done better at our social media, but because we have been the unleashed body of Christ. It's interesting. One of the heads of one of the denominations was saying to me recently, if you look at the churches that are growing, if you look at the churches that are growing, we see the operation of the Holy Spirit. We see people who believe in the power of God. We have messages from the pulpit where the word of God is being faithfully preached and taught without compromise. And the believers go out. Is that what we want for Cotton End? Is that, you're very quiet, is that what we want for Cotton End? Yes. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew does. I hope we all do. I hope we all do. I want to give us the opportunity this morning, before we come to celebrate communion, because communion is the most central act for me that brings us together as brothers and sisters in unity. But as I conclude this series of messages with you, I want us to have a time of ministry. That actually we would stand on the promises of God. That we wouldn't forget the red source. We're going to have a time of prayer. And I've got three things that God has asked me this morning that I want us to pray into. I want us to pray. I want us to pray for the leadership team of this church. I want you to pray for Tony as moderator, but to pray for the leadership team of this church, that that window of opportunity that God has given would be heard by the leadership team. I believe that for some of us, we need to be challenged about our prayer life and so i'm going to take some time to pray for those of us that need to say to god i'm sorry that i don't spend time with you i want to recommit to prayer and finally the third thing for all of us for all of us that we would be filled afresh with the holy spirit because even if we've, in answer to the question, when was the last time you asked to God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, whether that was this morning, whether that was a week ago, whether that was a month ago, whether that was a year ago or ten years ago, God always wants to give more. We just simply need to ask. I'm going to lead us in a, a time of prayer. After each one of those areas, I'm going to just leave some space 
We're not going to hurry this. I'm going to lead, just leave some space. And if you have things that you want to pray, personally or publicly, as a response to these prayer points, then please do feel free to speak it out. But we're going to come first to give thanks for this church and to pray for Tony and for those who are on the leadership team here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come. We come. Just as we are, we come. Lord, we thank you, but we also know that it terrifies us. That the word of God reminds us that you see into our hearts. And so, Lord, we come, whether we're in a good place or whether we're in a challenging place. We come and speak to you, our Heavenly Father, our Daddy. And we come this morning to give you thanks for your love for us. Lord, we thank you for your love that you give to us without without reserve Lord as we come this morning we come to give you thanks and praise for the love that you've poured into our hearts in the past for your love that you've poured into our hearts in the past that enable us to come and to sit and to be here this morning in this place as part of the body of Christ here in Cotton End. And so, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for each and every person who is part of this fellowship here in Cotton End, those who are here and those that are not. Lord, I want to thank you for those who have been mighty men and women of God who have been part of the church here. We thank you this morning, Father, for all those who have exercised the position of minister or pastor of this church. We thank you for all those who have preached your uncompromising word Lord this morning as we come to the end of this sermon series on the book of the Acts of the Apostles we thank you we thank you for your gift to the church and this morning we stand and we say yes and our men to that which you have for your people the church fellowship here in cotton end we say yes and amen for all that is to come lord we don't wait to praise you when it happens but we say at before it happens lord yes and amen and so this morning, Father God, we just pray for those who lead this fellowship at this time. Lord, we think of Tony, our moderator. We thank you for his love of this fellowship over many, many years. Lord, we pray for him this morning. And we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit afresh upon him. To lead, to guide and to provoke us 
as we seek your way for the future. May he provoke us to challenge us to what you are saying. We pray too for the leadership team of this church. We pray for those that hold office here. We pray for Angela. We pray for Margaret. We pray for Rob. Lord, we ask that you would unite the leadership team in this place. May you speak to them. May you speak to them individually and corporately about your plan and your purposes for this church. And then, Lord, as they speak and they share what they believe you to be saying to us, may we come to you prayerfully and ask, Lord, if this is what you are saying. But may we may be like those early believers who were of one heart and mind. So, Lord, we thank you for the members of this church, for those who have served this church, for those who are part of its leadership team at the moment. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to leave just a bit of space for anybody else that wants to pray around any of that stuff.
Amen. I want to just invite, and it is an invitation, I invite us all just to keep our eyes closed. But for those of us this morning, that second prayer point, for those of us that want to go deeper into God in prayer, for those of us who need to again be those that say yes we're available to god that the floor is the door for those of us that want god to pour out his holy spirit for those of us that desire to go deeper in prayer i just invite us just to hold out our hands just hold out our hands and i'm going to pray for us heavenly father we thank you that your word says that when we ask you give lord i thank you for that word and this morning lord i come before you and say that i stand with my brothers and sisters those lord whom you can see at this moment who are holding their hands out and saying lord we want to go deeper we desire to go deeper with you in prayer lord just as we uh, come before you this morning just send your holy spirit just work your way round this room father giving that renewed sense of your holy spirit for those, Lord, that are struggling to know how to pray. For those that don't know when to pray. Lord, I pray that you would now make space in people's diaries to be reminded to come to you in prayer. Lord, for those that don't know how to pray. Lord, that you would give them the words. But Lord, I pray most of all that people would have a fresh encounter with you in prayer. That brothers and sisters in this church this morning here in Cotton End would know again you as their father, you as their daddy. And that would encourage them. That would encourage them, Lord, to know that even when they don't have words to say, that you will still speak to them. For those of you that are holding out your hands, this morning I believe God is saying this to you. As Jesus woke early in the morning and there he prayed, you that are holding out your hands this morning, Jesus is saying to you, God is saying to you, I'm going to give you a new there. I'm going to give you a new there. But you need to keep holding out your hands. And so, Lord, we pray that we would see breakthrough in the prayer lives of all those who are putting their hands out. And for the Lord, those that want to put their hands out, Lord, but yet feel embarrassed 
We too pray, Lord, for them, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit afresh upon them in this area in desire for prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And the final one. For all of us, we're all in this. So I'm going to invite us all to put out our hands. For all of us. Father, at the beginning of this new year, at the beginning of this 2022, Lord, each and every one of us here in church this morning holds out our hands and says, Lord, we want to be filled afresh with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to be filled with your Holy Spirit so that we can be your ambassadors. That we can be your ambassadors in Cotton End, in Shortstown, in Wilsted, in Wixoms. Lord, wherever you place us, may we be your ambassadors. So Lord, today, fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are coming up to 5 to 12 and we are still going to break bread together.